Hey everyone, I'm Tila with Deep English. Thank you for joining me for another lesson today. Today we'll be learning five useful idioms and a little bit about their origins. An idiom is an expression or a phrase whose meaning isn't necessarily obvious. So even if you understand every single word within the idiom, you may not understand what the idiom itself actually means. That's why it's so important that you're here today learning what these idioms mean, because idioms are often used in conversation with English speakers, and if you really want to be fluent, you've got to learn your idioms. So before we get started, I just want to remind you to be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you get access to all of our newest videos right when they come out. So take a second to do that right now. Subscribe. Okay, are you ready to get started? Five useful idioms in English. Our first idiom is to pull someone's leg. To pull someone's leg. So if we were to look at this one literally, we might think that it means to pull on someone else's leg. So imagine if you're in a conversation with an English speaker and they say, are you pulling my leg? And you look down to make sure you aren't accidentally pulling their leg. <laughs> that would be so embarrassing and I don't want that to happen to you. That's why we are learning some of these idioms today. Okay, so let's look at the origin of this idiom. Where did this expression, to pull someone's leg, come from? Well, this one probably came from a time when thieves used this method to pull someone's leg, to trap them and then steal things from them. And so there was actually someone called a tripper upper and this person would either pull someone's leg or use a stick to hit their leg, ah, and then they would take things from them. Pretty scary. Luckily, to pull someone's leg when used today as an expression is not as scary and it's way less serious. So let's see if you can guess what it means to pull someone's leg when used in conversation today. What might it mean to pull someone's leg? I'll give you a moment. Okay, so this isn't the easiest one ever. So let's see if anyone got it. To pull someone's leg means to joke with them or to trick them, or maybe even tell them a little lie, but something that is playful, to pull their leg, to, to trick them. So we might use this one in a sentence like, I told him I forgot his birthday cake at the store, but when I saw how sad his face was, I had to say, I'm pulling your leg. Of course I have your cake. I couldn't go on with the joke. He was too sad. Or we might use this expression in a sentence like, when she told me I'd won the contest, I thought she was pulling my leg. There were so many good applicants. I couldn't believe that I'd actually won. Turns out she wasn't pulling my leg and I had one. Okay, so to pull someone's leg. Have you ever pulled someone's leg before? If you have a funny story, please share in the comments below. I'd love to read a few funny stories about you guys pulling someone's leg. All right, let's move on to our second idiom. This one is to turn a blind eye. To turn a blind eye. If we were to look at this one literally, we might think that it means like to take a blind eye and turn it around or maybe to have a blind eye and to turn it. Well, most of us don't have a blind eye. <laughs> so we can probably assume that this one means something different, that it doesn't have anything to do with a blind eye. Well, let's see. Let's look at the origin of this one. So this one probably came from a British naval hero named Admiral Horatio Nelson. He had one blind eye and one time he was told to stop firing on the enemy. So he was in his ship and he was given an order, stop firing on the enemy. And the order was actually given um, by a signal, 
now that I'm remembering. So there was a signal. So when the Admiral saw this, he, he looked instead with his blind eye and said, oh, I don't see a signal. So he pretended not to see it and he fired anyway. So he turned his blind eye and he fired anyway. He ended up winning. And this phrase became very famous, to turn a blind eye. So can you guess what it might mean to turn a blind eye when used in expression today? This one's a little easier. Okay, so to turn a blind eye means to ignore the truth or ignore facts, pretend that you didn't see or didn't know what was really going on. So to turn a blind eye, we might use this expression in a sentence like, the professor turned a blind eye when he saw his favorite student cheating. So to turn a blind eye, or in my own life, I remember one time I was working in research and one of the other researchers was really inappropriate. And so I told the director of our department, I said, this guy is really inappropriate. And she said, oh, well, I'm going to turn a blind eye because his research is so valuable. I think that's a little ridiculous, but to turn a blind eye. So you guys know what I mean now. So to ignore facts or to ignore reality. Mm. Have you ever turned a blind eye to something before? If you have and you feel comfortable sharing, feel free to share below in the comments. Okay, let's look at our third idiom, to rub someone the wrong way. To rub someone the wrong way. When you first hear this one, you might imagine like petting your friend in a way they don't like. <laughs> but luckily, this one has nothing to do with rubbing someone else. Let's take a little look at the history behind this one. So this one probably came from a time when early settlers would have servants wash their floors, their wooden floors. So oftentimes the servants would wash the floors in a way that wasn't right. And so they would be rubbing the floorboards in a way that left streaks. And so it was said that they were rubbing the floor the wrong way. I think that one is incredibly boring. <laughs> So I also like that there may be another history to this one. So this one could also come from simply rubbing a cat the wrong way. So instead of rubbing it with the fur, you rub against it. I prefer that one. I think it's a little less boring, plus I love cats. So to rub someone the wrong way. Let's learn what this phrase means when used in conversation today. To rub someone the wrong way simply means to bother them or to annoy them. So we might use this expression in a sentence like, the girl seemed really nice. I don't know why she rubbed me the wrong way. Every time I was around her, I was immediately annoyed. Or, I don't know why I rubbed him the wrong way. I tried to be really nice and smiley, but I could tell that he just didn't like me. So to rub someone the wrong way, or it rubs me the wrong way when people don't say please and thank you. So to rub someone the wrong way. What rubs you the wrong way? Feel free to comment below. All right, let's move on to our fourth idiom. This one, does the cat have your tongue? Does the cat have your tongue? Again, we might think about a cat taking somebody's tongue here, if we were to think of this one literally. But this doesn't have anything to do with a cat stealing someone's tongue. Let's look at the history of this idiom. So this one probably came from the English Navy, which used a whip called the cat o' nine tails and whipped anyone that committed a crime on board. So you may remember that this whip was also a part of a history of the idiom, which was to let the cat out of the bag. So this was the cat of nine tails, a whip that was kept in a bag. It was said that this whip was so painful that when someone was whipped with it, they wouldn't speak for a long time. So 
that does the cat have your tongue did you get whipped and that's why you're not speaking Ooh, i really don't like that one but there's another option here this one could have also come from a time in ancient egypt when a liar had their tongue cut out and the tongue was fed to cats uh, <laughs> i'm laughing but it's really not funny it's disturbing so this one is pretty disturbing let's take a look at what this idiom does the cat have your tongue means when used in conversation today so does the cat have your tongue actually is a question that really means why are you so quiet or um, have you spoken much since I've seen you so basically this is something that's like asking someone else why are you so quiet or even kind of saying i notice that you're really quiet so does the cat have your tongue we might use this one in a sentence like i watched a sad story on the news and later i was really quiet i was at this party and my friend didn't realize i'd watched this sad story and she asked me what's wrong with you does the cat have your tongue and i had to tell her oh i watched a sad story so does the cat have your tongue? Or you might say, cat got your tongue? So it's a shorter way of saying that. It just simply means, why are you so quiet? Or even noticing that someone else is quiet. All right, so let's move on to our fifth and final idiom. To go the whole nine yards. To go the whole nine yards. If we were to think about this one literally, we might think that it means to walk nine yards. <laughs> That's not a very significant um, walk. It's a pretty short walk, and I don't know why anyone would walk nine yards. So just like all the other idioms, this one has nothing to do with going the whole nine yards, but its history has something to do with going the whole nine yards. So let's take a look at the history of this one. So this one probably came from a time in World War II when fighter pilots were equipped with nine yards of ammunition. If a fighter pilot would use all of their ammunition, it was said that they went the whole nine yards and did everything they could to defend themselves and defeat the enemy. So to go the whole nine yards. Can you guess what this idiom means when used in conversation today? I'll give you a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, to go the whole nine yards means to try your best or to do everything that you can. So we might use this one in a sentence like, when he threw her a birthday party, he went the whole nine yards. He had cake and candles and balloons and he even had a magician. He went the whole nine yards. Or in my own life, I like to do things properly. And so if I'm going to do something, I want to go the whole nine yards. I don't want to just finish part of a project. I want to complete it and do it really well. I want to go the whole nine yards. So to go the whole nine yards. Do you have someone in your life who really likes to go the whole nine yards? If so, I'd love to hear about them below. All right, thank you guys so much for sharing this lesson with me today. We learned five useful idioms and a little bit about their origins. So if you like this lesson, feel free to give us a like, to comment, to subscribe. And if you'd like to get more free English lessons, click below. All right, thank you guys so much. I can't wait for our next lesson together. See you later. Hey there, I've got one more reminder for you. I want you to remember that fluency is not about perfection. Fluency happens when we practice and when we're not worried about being perfect. So take some time right now and practice. Practice in the comments below. Leave me a comment telling me whether or not you like this video or let me know what you'd like to see more of in the future.